Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in into the Inside Warrington podcast. We're here with Andy and we're actually inside Warrington Market. Um, Andy, do you want to take it away, mate? Introduce yourself to the uh, listeners. Yeah, um, so I'm Andy. I run a cafe at the end of the universe and Dark Side of Spoon in Warrington Market. So we're the go-to place, hopefully, in Warrington for amazing burgers and amazing desserts. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I think uh, your creations are probably some of the most talked about and Instagrammed burgers uh, across the Warrington, if not the whole of the, uh, the Northwest. Yeah, I hope so. That's kind of, that's what we want to be, you know, Instagram's where it's at, isn't it? So that's how so many people find us nowadays. Other people go out and they have a burger, take a picture, someone else sees it. Where do you get yeah. that from? And oh, that's perfect. What, that's what gets us. Proper Saturday and Sunday food, proper food. Um, so Andy, just tell me a bit more about, you know, Cafe in the Universe is such a unique business and so is Dark Side of the Spoons. Yeah. But where did it all start out for you? Where did you come from um, to get you into this sort of industry? So um, in terms of like, me becoming a chef was kind of a bit of a, probably a long and boring maybe story. So I try and- <laughs> We like long and boring stories. And, uh, condense it down a little bit. Essentially, I, I did a degree in biology at university. Um, and I, I don't even know why, like, you know, just you kind of go, you know, you go to a career thing and it's like, oh, well, you got out biology, do a degree in it. Not really with any thought of what job I was gonna do. Yeah, we'll so, just go with it. Yeah, exactly. So I kind of did that degree. And then I did do a few sort of jobs in, like labs and stuff is the most boring thing in the really? world. It's so bad. And also, not really jobs in biology, you know, it's all, uh, if you're going to do biology, it's more like, unless you work in a hospital, every, all lab jobs are time, kind of more chemistry based or whatever. So, anyway, so but while I was at college, I always like worked, you know, in, in pubs, like started off as a pot washer, you know, then you end up doing yeah. a few starters and stuff. You kind of work your way up. So, all through university, I was, I was kind of working in, in kitchens and end up, you know, doing like starters, working my way up a bit as a chef. Then after saying jobs not really working out for me, I kind of went and did that a bit full time, worked my way up a little bit, you know, and just did pubs, ended up like getting up head chef before you know it, because oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's fairly kind of easy with them pubs, is if you, you know, as long as you're willing to work hard and kind of learn, then you can easily work your way up pretty fast, which is what I did. So then I guess, I don't know how many years of work, working at that, you kind of go through busy pubs and I kind of really liked American style food. That was kind of one thing I was really interested in. and. There's definitely more and more of a, a market for it over here. You'd see places in Manchester, you know, like Red Strew Barbecue and Almost Famous and places really popping up. And I, I ended up working for a place called um, Stockyard in Hale, oh, which okay. was a, you know, American barbecue place. Obviously they got one in yeah, Stockton Heath something. as well, yeah. So I kind of worked there when it opened and, and went there, you know, because a really interesting smoke, smoking <laughs> food, all that kind of thing. So that was really good for us. But so Cafe at the end of the universe as an idea actually came quite a bit before that. It was, a, it was, I think, Doctor Who, like they had the 50th anniversary on TV. I don't know if you remember that, but at the time I was at a place in Altrincham called Blue Dog Bar, um, where we kind of, we, we did all, a lot of exo exotic meats on the menu. So we did like crocodile, kangaroo. Oh, okay. The owner was from New Zealand. So we kind of liked to, I guess that's where we different. started doing a bit weird, different stuff. And for the Doctor Who 50th anniversary, we were like, it'd be cool to do like an event that was whole, whole like themed Doctor Who. So people could come in fancy dress. We had a Doctor Who themed menu, so we started, you know, all like K9 dog, the hot dog kind of, that's where that came from. And I guess that was when I kind of had the idea, this would be cool if we could do this like full time. Yeah. It's just a cool idea, like mixing two things that I really like, you know, like pop culture, movies, games, all that kind of stuff in with food. So I guess that, that, that's where the idea came from. We kind of put it to one side a little bit. We, we end up in the next couple of years getting a van which we did all events all around kind of the Northwest, a lot of like Comic-Con events and stuff like that, especially Manchester, like Manchester Comic-Con. And was, Comic -Con. That, was that branded Cafe at the end of the universe? Yes, yeah. yeah, so the van was Cafe at the end of the universe, that's where we started. And that's how we ended up at Warrington really, because we ended up at Warrington Comic-Con one year. Right. Because um, we, again, we were looking really at Comic-Cons we could do, because that kind of fit in with, uh, with what we did. But the problem is a lot of Comic-Cons have their own food, they're also, yeah. so that became a bit of an issue, whereas, the market was there, and we, if we could get in and do our food there, people would like our food better than the food that was there, but it was impossible to get our food in there, yeah, so yeah. it kind of became a bit of a, a problem. So, but anyway, Warrington Comic Con kind of came, and we did that, and we really enjoyed it, and obviously Paul from the market was really, really uh, excited to have us there, and he just kept all the time, like, when the new market opens, we need you in there, because obviously we need to bring younger people into the market. So. That kind of went on the back burner. I was still doing the van on the side, but also, you know, working full time on the side. And then eventually when we went to market, we came in here really late. We were literally, I think, got the call that one of the units was available maybe a couple of days before it opened. 
So we didn't we didn't even actually open when the market opened this one. We were like a few days late. Yeah. I think like maybe the market opened on the Saturday and we opened on the Wednesday. Well, that was pretty much it. That was Cafe Lindy University. So, so, so when did um, so when did you kind of leave full time employment? So literally when we came to Warrington, up until up until when when we got that thing in Warrington, we were doing it as like part time. You know, just on the side, weekends, doing the, the band, doing events, did a lot of you know weddings and. 50th anniversaries, festival, little fat time festival time. So you knew that there was a genuine love for these signature film inspired burgers. Yeah, when we as soon as we started doing it, like people not only love the name, but I think when you go to events like that, they're used to the food being pretty rubbish yeah, to be basic honest. Basic cheeseburger, hot dog with onions exactly. that are overdone. Yeah, so that's that's what they expect. So I think straight away, I remember one of the first events we did, it was um Manchester Anime Con, and there was there was a some guy guy there who came and tried our food. And he did like, he had a podcast at the time. We had like, and it was um, a cosplay one, all about cosplay. That's what we talked about. But obviously, he liked burgers as well. Yeah. And him and his mates all came. And so they did, when they did the review of the um, Manchester Anime Con, it became more, a less less of a review about the actual convention itself, and more of a review of our food. Because oh, he was like, and so we really shared it. <laughs> no, so he shared it. And he was like, and obviously we got linked into it. And I listened to it. And I was like, and these guys, they couldn't, if we'd have paid them, they couldn't have, it couldn't have been a better review, you know what I mean? They were, they were like, right, we went to the Comic Con, usually food's rubbish, there was this band there, uh, the names were amazing, they were so funny, they are all tied in, it's like different pop culture type things, but more than that, the food was really good, that's what yeah. they were kind of really impressed with. They were like, if you went to a, a restaurant and had that, you'd be well happy with it, yeah. you know, and it's just based in a car park at a, a Comic yeah. Con. So I guess from kind of that moment, we were, like, we were like, yeah, people do appreciate the fact that we're making an effort to make our burgers, our, our food's really good. And um, you know, I think the pop culture thing is just a bit of a, a side, a bit, of, a bit of fun, isn't it? Yeah. Because ultimately, if your food's rubbish, you know, there's no point, is there? No yeah. point. We have great names, but no one's going to buy it. Exactly, yeah. So that's that's the kind of the bottom line of it. And that's why I think we've managed to do well here, because is that people who might not be interested in the names, they might just see the names and think they're funny. We get old people who don't even understand the names a lot of time. You know, they're like, I don't, I just want to play in burger. But when they have the burger, they're still like, that's one of the best burgers I, I had. Don't want Kevin know. Bacon. <laughs> how how, how, how does he fit on that bun? I don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, the names become, become, it's just a bit of fun, aren't they? But the food is really what the most important part of it. Good. Yeah. And what sort of, dis- it was it uh, going from you're employed to self employed and speaking with Paul and the guys behind Warrington Market? Was it a tough decision when they gave you the call? Or was it actually, do you know what? I've been waiting for this opportunity or someone just to give me the little nudge and say go yeah. and do it no it was definitely that like just the opportunity we were waiting for because um i don't know i, I kind of seen the potential in warrington and, and obviously being local i kind of knew a lot about the area and although we've done a lot of events in manchester i kind of thought there's not really anything like us in warrington and i think we could do really well here so it was definitely a case of like yeah go, just go for that opportunity because so, i think some, you just have to go for it sometimes you know there's no point like thinking oh you know we could maybe just do a few days here to test it or maybe we could do it part yeah. time and it is a bit of a leap of faith because obviously this was, you know, you go from full-time employment where you're getting quite, yeah, not, yeah. I mean, obviously a chef's not the best money in the world. It's a lot hard hours, but it's fairly okay money. So you go from that to thinking, you know, if I don't sell any burgers this week, I ain't getting paid. So mm. it is a bit of a leap of faith, but, you know, obviously we're glad we did it and we're glad we're here now. And you, you're, you're in business with your partner, Laura? Um, Laura's my sister. Oh, okay. uh, Vicky's my, my, my wife. They get yeah. next up all the time. Let's, let's not get let's not get that one. <laughs> no, on that Sorry is, to both of you. <laughs> that is a constant problem. That, you know, the, the Warrington Guardian they do that sometimes. You know, where they're like, so we get people. Why does it say Laura's your wife or Vicky's your sister? Or so yeah, that does get mixed up a little bit. But no, Vicky's my wife. Um, they both came like to help part time when we first started, um, and then obviously when I was just on my own, and then I had a bit of help at weekends. But as we've grown, they have both work full time with me as well now. So. Good. And how did you find that? Um, stressful or oh, it's not stressful toes? it's easy isn't it we're just making burgers she's like hiding behind the camera over there like looking at my answer uh no i, I really enjoy working both of them so it's good good yeah. so cafe at the end of the universe that, don't I? <laughs> yeah yeah of course yeah. um but of course it wasn't the only thing that started here so we're actually sat in dark side of the spoon yeah so just talk us through the transition really what kind of went well we're doing this one cool little thing over here we can do this for desserts as well. Yeah, I mean, the dark side kind of was never really a separate entity to begin with, as in when we first had, came with the concept, we always wanted to do desserts. Right, that okay. was kind of part of Cafe at the end of the universe. And if we'd have ever, ever had a cafe or a restaurant, which was the initial plan what we were looking at, then they probably wouldn't be two businesses now. It probably would have just been all lumped in as one. But 
obviously we're in the market we're a little bit restricted we're restricted by space obviously we only have quite a small unit and we're restricted by licenses because certain people can only sell certain things in the market oh, right, because okay. obviously you know you can't have like two places doing the same thing so yeah so we were, we were a little bit restricted by that so when we came in here we, we obviously had to forget no we can't do any desserts can't do any of that so we just kind of put it on the back burner and forget about it a little bit but the ideas were always there in case opportunities ever arose in, in the future and it, Again, conversations I'd had with like market management, they're really eager to get a dessert place in. And they kind of knew I had ideas one before and I told them all the different ideas we had. So I guess Dark Side kind of grew from that. Like I say, we never had a separate business or a separate idea or a separate name for it. It was just an extension of Cafe at the end of the universe. But I've got to give Vicky credit because she came up with the name Dark Side of the Spoon. Like As, you know, I'm usually the one who comes up with all the cool names, but she came up with that one. So we'll give her credit for at least at least one. Um, and it just kind of fits because it's like, you know, it kind of fits in with the same like kind of pop culture, space inspired theme. But, but I, now, think, I think if, if anyone listening or watching hasn't been on your Instagram page for yeah. either business, the next thing you should do after listening to this is definitely go on there and search either business because it's just insane. I mean, how, how do you even come up with some of the ideas, especially the burgers? Uh, well, do, do you know, that's the most <laughs> asked question we get, or? the burger, burger week. Sometimes a little bit. I mean, obviously, I think with burgers, for, for a start, it's like a really kind of good blank canvas, isn't it? You can literally put anything on yeah. a burger. So that, that's why that's why we love burgers as well, obviously, because they're just such a good way of like, um, you can be as crazy as you want with them. But in terms of how we come up with the burgers of the week, I think we either, there's two, there's two different ways. Either we have a concept, like there's a film or something, or a TV show, yeah. I'm like, I really want to do a burger from that. And then you either look into it and you think, well, is this food using this scene or is this, so you take little inspiration from that. And then you kind of create a burger around that or the, the other way is like the total opposite where you come up with a burger and you've got i really want to do this burger i've not got a name for it but it's got this this and this on it and then you just kind of come up with a name around the burger so there is two different ways how they kind of come about i tend to have like a bank of ideas like you know kind of saved in my phone all different burgers and eventually you know we just keep going back to them and but we, we kind of worked out a few weeks ago we've done over a hundred different burgers in the yeah, time so of the cafe and which i think in itself is kind of a bit ridiculous i mean yeah. i don't know how we're going to come up with the, the next hundred because it, it does get quite hard to come up with ideas but we've still got plenty we've got loads stored in the phone so we're not running out of ideas yet no but it's it's good for those who haven't tried your burgers because if you did want a week again re recited all that, that's two years worth of burgers for people to try yeah and, and there's always there's always a good thing that people can't can't get in every week you know what i mean so even our best regulars that some of them are like i've had 70 of them burgers which is that's ridiculous people have had that many but but even some of our good regulars are like i've had 20 or 30 so it's kind of impossible for people to get in every week so that means we've got the opportunity of bringing back burgers which we've done before which you know people missed out on which do really well or burgers which time with like a specific time of the year like we always do like a, a thanksgiving you know american thanksgiving we always do like a moist maker from friends like the gravy so bun because people go absolutely mad for that and it is an amazing burger but it's something that's a bit you know it's a bit of a pain to do and yeah, we make our own gravy from like beef bones you know and everything and it's it's not like one we what we'd want on the menu full time but yeah. like once a year it's kind of nice to do that for for a week or whatever so that'll be my and it, it just goes to show that there's innovation in what you're trying to achieve as well. So obviously there's national chains all around the town that we won't mention any names of, yeah. but there's what, what I feel like with Warrington at the moment is a real community spirit and people want to get behind new ideas. Yeah. So you must be seeing an increase of footfall, especially when you're throwing out a new burger of the week. Mm. Uh, like you mentioned before we started the podcast, just yeah. throughout the day, people are now going out of the way to order them yeah. um, wherever they can get them. So people in Warrington can't get enough of it. Which is definitely, and that's what that's the way you have to be, isn't it? We have to be innovative because you know we don't have the marketing power of massive companies or anything. But the, the way I always look at it is like, is you know, you 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 can't complain about you know we don't have this because you've got to look at what we do have that they don't, mm -hmm. and basically they can't produce you know the quality that we can. They can't produce like the food to order like we can because the chains have to get into the kind of regiment of it has to be exactly like this. So everything has to be you know don't suspect they try and do things as fast as they can whereas we we kind of unashamedly will say to people you know we're not fast food i'd rather someone wait a half an hour well, on a saturday good. and they're going to get a good burger rather than there you go here's one i made like a half an hour ago it sat there been wrapped yeah, up you know yeah. and you get in it doesn't look anything like what they expect so you know i think as long as we keep producing the quality then people don't mind waiting a little bit yes and i suppose with going to the 
back to the burger creation and the thought process behind it. You know, there's a lot in the media at the moment in terms of uh, veganism and vegetarian, and we should be reducing our meat consumption. Yeah. I mean, has your business felt the pressure? Have you, you're, are you getting more and more requests for vegan items on the menu? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say pressure. We definitely do have a few like vegans that kind of always ask us because we have done, you know, vegan stuff, but we have found it a little bit difficult to be quite honest, just because of how uh, vegans, a lot of vegans like won't go to a place that does meat. So you have that, that bit of an issue. Um, where vegetarians are a bit more flexible because obviously they'll they'll quite happily come to us, but and we've had such a mixed kind of up and down response to when we've done vegan stuff. The first vegan burger we did was amazing and it did really well. So we thought, oh, we bring one back and do it, and we hardly sold any, and it was like a worst selling burger ever. Mm -hmm. And it might just been the type of burger that we did that people don't like. Whether it's you know, I mean, just because it's vegan doesn't necessarily mean it's good or that everyone's going to like it. People like different things, but I think every vegan burger we've done has been really good. Yeah. But it's definitely um, a trend for that coming up. And I think in the new market, we will definitely be trying to do more vegan stuff. We have struggled because of the space issue we have in this market. Um, because we only have a certain amount of fryers. So, you know, you can, the only certain things you can do in the yeah. fryers, we've got chicken going in. You can't put vegan stuff in it, you know. And, yeah. and the same with um, our buns. Uh, you know, we, we get our buns fresh from the bakery every day, but we use brioche. So they're not vegan. So, yeah. I, at the moment, other than when we do a special, I kind of say the only vegan thing we have on our menu really is our fries, which are, which are vegan. <laughs> everything else is <laughs> it's got fries, some then. sort of cheese or, but that's why people go mad for it. You know, yeah. it's got cheese or, or cream in it, then yeah. people go crazy. But yeah, and I suppose it's it's not just Warrington that have um, got a, a newfound love for your business and the burgers and the desserts that you have. You've actually had national recognition for the hard work of your creations and the quality that you're delivering. So I believe it not so long ago, you're up for the British National Takeaway Awards. Yeah, that was a crazy experience. We That was sort of something, again, I think a, a few of our uh, customers, regulars kind of said, oh, the Takeaway Awards, have you ever thought about entering this? So we just kind of looked into it and we, we just submitted it, didn't really think anything of it. And then eventually we found out it goes to a vote. And obviously we're lucky that Warrington, we've got a good following on Facebook, you know, yeah. pretty, so people kind of really get behind us and obviously they voted for us. Next thing you know, we, we kind of got shortlisted for like um, the, the Northwest and then they send people around to like mystery, you know, like oh, a mystery, really? mystery diner type thing. So you don't know when they come in, they come in, they order your food, they order it takeaway, they go and dissect it, they take pictures, they look into it, they, look, they mark it for quality, they mark it for how good your servers were, they mark it for everything. So and we, so we got, we found out that we were in the, in the we were finalists and we got to go to London to a big, like fancy award ceremony at the Savoy, which is like, you know, way, way kind of above our, our scale or whatever. We just kind of went and- Enjoy the moment though. It was amazing. It was like such, it was, it's essentially, the only way I can describe it is like the Oscars for burgers or Oscars for takeaways, you know, because <laughs> you go there and it's like present, you know, Jimmy Super Carr pizza. presents, Jimmy Carr presented oh, it. Thanks. Really funny, comes out, have all just eat drivers dancing around and the big thing on the stage. And then, and when you get to your category, obviously you're there and you're a little tuxedo, like looking like the waiter or something. And they, so they announce everyone and as you go, if you have a shot at you and you have to like, obviously now do a cheesy thumbs up like, yay. And then, so they announced the cafe at the end of the universe and then they announced the winner and unfortunately we didn't win. But I mean, it was an amazing experience just to be involved in and yeah. just like, and not just for us, just to kind of put Warrington on the map. You know, the fact that Warrington Takeaway was nominated and, and we were one of the top five in the Northwest. Yeah. So just, just to go down for that was amazing. And um, we actually got the feedback because they send you all the mystery diner report afterwards like a couple of weeks after you get yeah. everything through a post nice certificate say you know we're finalists in the british takeaway awards and we got we got the feedback for the mystery shopper thing and our mystery shopper thing was ridiculous like how good it was oh, really? i was like completely we got 98 percent on it we uh we, we top scored in the northwest so we, we've got the high, higher than anyone so the only reason we didn't win it i guess because it's, it's it's like the three different parts it's on mystery diner score it's on like judges and it's also on like a vote so it must have been the judges and the vote which we didn't quite get enough to whatever to, to make us a off. winner sounds like they got paid possibly off. possibly but next year we're going to come back stronger and i think you know the fact that we had such good support in warrington i think if we go back next year one great thing about the takeaway awards is i noticed that there's so many businesses that have been nominated two or three times a year mm -hmm. two or three times the last few years and then eventually they win it so i think sometimes if you get your name in there and people yeah, you get a bit of recognition yeah then next year, you know, there's a chance of us might win that. I mean, we might even get to the final next year, but you never know. But, but I guess we'll cross our fingers and we'll Just make see sure we... you've got to keep your quality high, the food tasting good. Exactly, and yeah. Because you never know when a mystery diner is going to uh, yeah. pop in, I guess. But yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. Exactly. So you own, um, or you guys have two businesses in, in the market. 
Um, obviously got a lot of innovation and people will probably look and do a spiral and say, oh, you know, they've got a really cool business there. Mm -hmm. I want to do something like that. Or I, I wish I could open up my own store in the market. So in terms of anyone that's listening, who's yeah. kind of sat on the fence thinking, I'd like to have a go myself. What, what advice, knowing what you know now yeah. about running your own businesses, what would you tell somebody uh, thinking of starting up? I think just do it. You just literally got to get out and do it. Because I think you only, you only find out, you know, how to run a business properly by doing it. Like, you know, I come from a chef background and I never had any any knowledge of running a business or whatever. So everything I've just learned, it's just, you know, as you go along. Now, you know, you end up doing all your, you know, VAT returns, everything and all that nonsense that we have to do, which is, so you, you kind of end up learning all this stuff on the way. But like I say, you only learn by making the mistakes. And we've like made loads of mistakes on the way to get where we are. I'm sure we'll make loads more in the future. Yeah. But as long as you keep fancy. learning from them, then I think, you know, you only you only find out by doing it, I guess. Yeah, that's good. So what's what's next for, for you then? So obviously we're kind of we're just kind of in the process moving to a new market, which is gonna be amazing. A whole development at Times Square, which I'm sure everyone in Warrington will know all about, is um is gonna be a massive for Warrington, it's gonna be massive for the area. So we're like four or five weeks from moving, hopefully, yeah. into a new market, which is you know, I'd all I'd say is just keep keep your eyes and ears like kind of watching for this whole yeah. thing because it's going to be amazing and if you haven't if you haven't been around this area where the market is uh where the botanists are on times square warrington town center is a changing place um so if you've not been here the last 12 months you've probably been living under a rock but do have, come and have a look around the town yeah. it is a changing place and a great place to uh, to get behind on yeah literally like every month or every week you go out and it, it, it's changing it's so different out there and it's like and it's going to be brilliant once it's done you know it's, it's there's so much amazing stuff happening so it's just kind of Let's just uh, do it. I can't Good. wait. It's going to be exciting. Good. Yeah. So, Andy, thanks for your time today, mate. No um, problem. One thing that we're asking all of our guests um, is we want to know what is it that you love about Warrington? Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, so what I say about Warrington is, and this like sounds a bit strange, but I always think Warrington is kind of a little bit weird. That's a good <laughs> thing. I mean, weird in a good way, but, but, but I think weird is kind of a really underappreciated word. And I went to... We went, we're lucky enough to have been on quite a few like American road trips where we take inspiration for a lot of our food. And the last time we went, we went to, we started off in Portland in America and Oregon. I don't know if you've ever been, but it's amazing, amazing place. It's very, and very similar to kind of, you know, big cities over here like Manchester where it's very, a bit hipstery, you know, everyone's like walking around with beards and they're obsessed with football and yeah. tattoos and, and craft beer, craft beer is massive over there. Um, but one thing I really liked is the, 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 there's a massive sign in the middle of Portland and it just says, keep Portland weird. And I kind of thought, that's like Warrington. That's what Warrington should keep be, you know. It's a, bit, it's a bit weird, but that's a cool thing. You know, we need to kind of embrace that kind of weirdness and, and don't be scared to be different. Yeah, that's what definitely. kind of we want to be with our business. Don't be scared to be different and and um, we can all be different together. Then, right? don't, be, don't be scared to try anything new as well. Exactly, is, yeah. Uh, that's, what, that's the whole what point. This is what you should do. Right, well, listen, I've taken enough of your time. As you probably heard, we are on the market and there are people actually stood around trying to make money. Uh, trying to order some coffees and ice creams here. So we'll get this wrapped up. So thanks to everyone who's tuned in today. And don't forget, if you are a Warrington Buyers Club member, do check your app because you will get 10% off these amazing places um, and get yourself on the, the burger of the week as well. So thanks for listening. Awesome.